Good morning. <clears throat> Life certainly uh, offers uh, really severe challenges to us at times. We can become anxious. Uh, we can become confused. We don't understand why things are happening the way they are. And as I was thinking about this today, I thought of our friend Job. Uh, he certainly had some challenges. If you look at the book of Job, it breaks down into three nice parts. The first two chapters Job is in the hands of Satan. That's not a fun place to be. Uh, from chapter 3 through 37, Job is in the hands of his three friends, and they worked him over real well uh, with their critique of why he was going through the problems that he was. They're claiming that uh, he's having all these problems because he's been unfaithful to God, in a sense. But the last several chapters in the book of Job, <clears throat> Job is in God's hands. And God asks uh, a score, three score of questions of Job concerning, does Job really understand who God is? That was quite a lesson for Job. Job has to answer no to every one of those questions. He can't do the things that God does. But let's see what Job is all about, because I think it's relevant for today. Um, I heard a, a man speak about this one time, and he said, if you have a bottle of vinegar and you upset it, what comes out? Huh, vinegar. What if you have a bottle of sweet wine and you upset that? What comes out? Well, the sweet wine. What if you upset Job? What comes out? Well, exactly what we see in Job's response to being in the hands of Satan, the hands of his three friends, in the hands of God. So if we look at Job carefully, in one sense, it almost seems like this guy's a real loser. Everything's against him. There, there doesn't seem to be any value in any of it, unless we look at the last chapter. And I think in chapter 42 of Job, we see what the real story is. Why did God let Job go through all that difficulty? Or to make it more practical for us, why does God let us go through all the difficulties we face. They're not without their purpose. And if we have the mind of Christ, everything, every difficulty, every experience has a purpose uh, that blesses us for eternity. So let's see what uh, I would believe the reason was for Job going through all these problems. Allow me please just to read two verses. This is from uh, Job chapter 42, verses 5 and 6. Job said, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. And then in verse 6, Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. I think these two verses sum up the purpose for which God allowed Job to go through all the difficulties. So in verse 5, he said, Wow, I have heard about you with the ear, now I see you with my eyes. So let's think about that a moment. <clears throat> Paul tells us that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If we look at the life of Job, he was what we would think of as a righteous man. It's actually declared in the scriptures. He knew a lot about God from the word of God. He knew a lot of things that he could say, uh, defined who God was from the Word of God. So he heard with his ear, if you will. God had revealed himself to Job through the Word of the Lord in some fashion. We don't know exactly how. But what he didn't have was his heart really attuned to in a personal relationship with God. All these difficulties caused him to see God. Now, we have to be careful here because you can't see God. God is invisible. So it's not talking about optical view of God, but I think what it is speaking of is the eye of faith finally appropriating in a very personal, intimate relationship who God was. He drew close to God. It wasn't just that he knew about God. Now, because of all these difficulties, and his crying out to God, and his remaining faithful through all of this, not to abandon his faith, he now comes to the conclusion of being able to really see who God is by faith. 
This is an amazing truth. In fact, it would appear from other scriptures that we really don't draw near to God. We don't really learn to appreciate him until we go through trying times where we cry out to him, where we really learn to depend upon him. In fact, prayer is really the ultimate statement of dependence, isn't it? When we pray to God wholeheartedly, then we're really depending on him. And I think that's exactly what Job went through. He heard with his ear. He knew some things about God. He appreciated God. He could tell stories perhaps about God, but he didn't know God. But now after being in the hands of Satan, his three friends and God himself, Job has arrived at a new plane of being. He knows and experiences God. But verse six says something even more profound, I think. Uh, If I could read it again, therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Well, first of all, I don't think he's talking about self-loathing. He's not saying, oh, I hate myself uh, and that type of thing. I am so bad. I just, nobody likes me and and, um, I'm a real jerk. He wasn't thinking that at all. In fact, what I think he was saying because it becomes clear in the epistles as to how we should view self. He was saying, I'm not going to trust myself. I hate the results of trusting in myself. I disdain what happens when I don't trust in God, but trust only in myself. Job doesn't explain it, but I think what he's saying is he came to learn just how evil how despicable and how contradictory to God our self-nature really is. He came to the point where he could say, no longer do I want to trust in my fallen nature. I want to trust in God. I've seen him with the eye of faith. I'm going to stick close to him. It's, I think, what he's saying. Because he says he repents in dust and ashes. What does he have to repent of? the very thing that we have need to repent of. We trust ourselves too much. We think too highly of ourselves, And the problem is that self does one of two things to us. It either pumps us up and we become uh, people of a hubris nature, or it slams us down and we become uh, unable to really see things correctly or serve God and we kind of wimp out and crawl over in a corner and remain uh, inactive. Self is evil, our self nature. We're stuck with it until either the rapture or when we die. And it can rule if we don't let it. But here's Job saying, I repent of trusting in myself. And I think this is the ultimate reason why God allows us to go through difficulties. So we really learn the truth, not only about God, and learn to appreciate Him even more, and want to stick closer to Him, but not to trust in our fallen nature. This is a wonderful lesson to be drawn, I believe, from the book of Job. So let me ask a question. What do you think of the self-nature? How would you define yourself? Do you think of yourself as being good, basically good, perhaps better than other people? Self is terribly sinful. It's in a state of rebellion with God. We dare not trust it. So another question, how do we overcome self? Well, I don't think that scriptures teach that we can do it by trying to reform self. It'll never change. The only way we can overcome is through the cross of Christ, where Paul said we were crucified with Christ. The old nature is crucified with Christ. But another question, how do we see God? All of us yearn to want a closer relationship with him, but generally we try to do it through our senses and The senses are limited, they're finite, but God is infinite. And so to be in contact with him, it's simply a faith issue. It's believing that he reveals himself to those who seek him. Are you seeking God? I think Job came out of this whole terrible, difficult situation 
with a new desire to seek God. If we seek him, we shall be found of him. If we draw nigh, he draws nigh to us. I think that's the conclusion that Job came to the point where he wanted, desired wholeheartedly to be in close fellowship with our Creator God. God bless you.